the Department of International Relations and Cooperation are our hosts this morning. We are here, we are doing a live broadcast. Not only are they hosting us, but of course, the heads of missions that represent South Africa all around the world are also here for the Biennial Conference. It's a conference that started on Monday, it'll be ending on Friday, just to ensure that all of the respective heads of missions are on the same page, they're all of the same understanding of what the mission that South Africa has in mind. And we've got the minister with us that's outlining a couple of the goals that they'd like to achieve and some of the things are being discussed here in South Africa during this conference. Um, Minister, before we went to the ad break, one of the questions that I was asking you, and I think it's a trend that you see in some countries around the world where they are limiting the amount of embassies and representation of their country in certain countries because of economic reasons, no other reason. Is it still viable for South Africa? We still have one of the highest representations. Is it right in a, at a time like this to still have that level? Well, I haven't heard of the United States of America uh, reducing their sphere of influence or representation. Of course we are not America. We're an African country. They are just the amount of work that these ambassadors and high commissioners, consul generals do in attracting foreign direct investors. It's in billions of rents. So the personal touch, absolutely no technology can take that place away from that. When we say we have received more than 13 million tourism arrivals, it is because the Department of Tourism cannot be all over the world. We are actually not all over the world as yet. The members of the United Nations are 193 or 94, but we are just but in the number of countries that we have mentioned now. So if we don't do that in this current global, political and economic environment, we will not stand to be counted. So we are where we should be, and if we had more, we would want to go further, but we are very conscious of the challenges, which are not only ours, but that are facing global the economy. So we are trying to do much with less. That's what these ambassadors and high commissioners and consul generals are doing. If you listen to some stories of what they go through, you'd realize that there's a real committed South Africans who do not take their mandate for granted. Yeah. I know that we're going to be speaking to some of the ambassadors that uh, are, you know, they've been deployed into, into very volatile countries and volatile mm -hmm. areas where they're involved in peacekeeping and trying to maintain relations between countries. So that's something we will be focusing in on mm -hmm. and the work that they do. You speak about three different types of mm -hmm. heads of missions. Mm -hmm. You talk of a consul general, you talk of, a, of an ambassador, mm -hmm. and uh, you talk of a... High Commissioner. High Commissioner, thank you very much, filling in the missing words. What are the differences, just so that South Africans understand that? Well, ambassadors and high, and high commissioners are basically one. Safe to say that in former uh, British colonies, they're called High Commissioners or addressed as High Commissioners. And non-former British colonies, they're called ambassadors, one and the same thing. Consul generals are offices that are in, let's, let's take for example the USA, we do have consulate generals because the country is big in two other centers in Chicago, LA, in three, in fact, and New York. Plus our permanent representative mission, so as to cover as much as we possibly can. So that's why in some countries, like in India, we've got a high commission office in New Delhi. And then we have a consulate general who works with the high commissioner. They plan together, they work together, but the economic hub of India, for example, is Mumbai. So we have a presence there. Yeah. So that's the difference. Okay. Yes. How do you become a head of mission? I mean, I, I, I've always dreamt of it. I, you know, if I have to I mean, you said the, 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 the ambassador of Vienna. Yeah, I'm, I'm available when you're tired of that role. I, I'll go to Vienna. I see, a lot of, I see a lot of former ministers here. I see a lot of 
a lot of diplomats. It's so nice to see some familiar faces that we haven't seen in a very, very long time, actually wondering where they had disappeared to. And now I understand where they've disappeared to. They're back, they're here. So what is it? Uh, how, how do you become a head of mission? You become a head of mission. We've got almost 2,000 career diplomats who are serving this department. But every other country will also pick amongst their best as a political appointees to be strategically a, you know, representing South Africa in a given location at a given time. The world is fast changing and there is not a single country that would not try and be, bring the best in them to represent South Africa. I keep saying to our representatives or our ambassadors and air commissioners and consulate generals that out of the more than 50 million, you're the only one with a letter signed by the president that if you see this man or this woman, you see South Africa and you see me. Yes. So it is really a great honor. It is a privilege, but also a huge responsibility because you can never take leave from yourself. Leanne, we had said earlier on, the world is fast changing. So biennially, we bring our heads of missions back home. They meet with a, you know, a, a plethora of, of ministers who share with them on how we intend to implement our national development plan, which I had linked earlier on with the sustainable development goals and our agenda 2063 but also so that they keep their feet on the ground, they go back home and represent South Africa well. If they're not coming home, we travel around the world, myself and our two deputies, to keep in touch with them. So every second year, they come back home. Then they get a marching orders first from the president and then meet with all the identified ministers or ministries. I have listened to a very exciting program that uh, Honorable uh, Minister Pando was sharing with them yesterday. I know that Minister Lynn Brown came here in the afternoon on the role of a, a state-owned uh, enterprises or businesses uh, out there in the world for us to show up our economy. So this is the kind of things we do with our ambassadors and high commissioners and consul generals when they're home. Fantastic. Minister, thank you very, very much. We're going to uh, take a break here on the program and uh, we'll continue to discuss this and we'll also have a look at some of the cadet programs because some very fortunate uh, members of the youth are able to participate in the program to have a look and see what it's like to actually be in this, uh, in this kind of ministry and gain experience in the various areas. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. So stay tuned to Morning Live a lot more and also looking forward to speaking to some of the heads of missions that have gathered here some new some familiar faces and uh, it's just lovely to be here it really really is stay tuned to morning live let's take a break we'll have the news at seven for you after this break